students today I have with me is my special guest Marcus King who is the Broadcasting and Legal Manager at the AFL. Marcus, thanks for joining me. Pleasure. Thanks, so Marcus, you did your law at uh, La Trobe University but before that you are at Melbourne Uni um, doing mm. arts and commerce. Yep. Did you always want to be a lawyer? No. Um, I went through school not even thinking about law as an option and it was probably about fourth year into my commerce arts that I realised that what I was doing there wasn't sort of satisfying me that much and um, I had friends doing law and through ch conversations with them I realised that was the path I wanted to go down. And you've worked um, in some of the big law firms uh, in Melbourne um, as a clerk uh, and also yep. as a lawyer. Yep. Uh, did you ever think that you were going to get into the sports area, the AFL? Why, why did you go from some of those big law firms to the AFL? How did that come about? Yep. I think um, I, I felt that starting off in a, in a big law firm was a good place to start but I didn't really, I didn't see myself getting into sport straight away. Sport was always a passion um, and I guess at some point um, I, I wanted to be able to work with that passion but I didn't really see how it was going to take shape until uh, this job came up. And um, did you play a bit of sport? I mean yeah. obviously combining uh, your studies and sport, was that also something that framed your mind? What, what, what were you good at? Yeah, well, well not, <laughs> not football. Um, uh, I was good at tennis. Yep. Uh, and so when I was at Melbourne Uni, I played a lot of tennis, actually coached tennis there for a number of years. Um, and, you know, sport generally, I sort of dabbled in it. Um, but sort of nowadays, less playing, but obviously working in it, yeah. And um, for our students who uh, obviously don't know where their career might take them, just give us an overview of what you do as a lawyer at, uh, at the AFL. You're involved in uh, fixtures, uh, in yep. uh, giving legal advice, just give us an overview. Yeah, it's a, pre it's a pretty broad role, um, so there's probably two components to it. There's the, the broadcasting side, which is primarily um, the AFL fixture and um, uh, negotiating uh, television rights, radio rights. Um, those sort of broadcast um, aspects of the business and then there's the general legal role which is a whole host of different um, you know, aspects of legal uh, work that can come up and that's servicing different parts of the business whether it's um, our commercial operations team on sponsorship deals or might be our game development team um, you know establishing a women's competition for example we also service the state leagues around the country um, and uh, some of the AFL clubs, the so Gold Coast Suns and, and the Giants. Um, so it's quite, quite broad, um, but I, I really like that as a, uh, uh, coming from private practice where you're quite a specialist lawyer in, in one area and that was property law for me. Coming from that to uh, a really broad role, that, that, I love that. Um, every day is different um, and that's challenging, but I really enjoy it. Sounds good. So let's take the Women's League, for instance, um, and it's going to grow. There's no question of doubt about that. And um, a lot of our students, no doubt, saw the, the exhibition match between the Bulldogs and, uh, and Melbourne. What, what sort of legal issues would arise uh, in relation to the setting up of the, uh, the Women's League? Oh, a huge number of them. I mean, it's starting a, a competition from scratch, there's just so much to it. And there's a legal aspect to almost everything. So, you know, whether it's the player contracts, um, establishing that employment relationship, what does it look like, um, how many hours do they have to train, um, you know, particularly given um, these women are part-time athletes, hopefully down the track they'll be full-time athletes, but for the moment part-time. Uh, then there's the broadcast arrangements, who's broadcasting the matches, is it Channel 7, is it Foxtel, who's broadcasting on mobile, is it Telstra or, or someone else. Where are we playing the games? We need, we need venues, we need venue hire agreements, we need sponsorship, um, you know, who, who's sponsoring um, the league, uh, the clubs, um, so, and that's just scratching the surface. Then you've got the rules of the competition, are they the same as the AFL or they, do they vary? I mean, we're looking at you know, maybe some variations like 16 aside rather than 18 aside. How do clubs um, draft players? So that, that is different for the women than for the men. So it's, yeah, there's just so many things to think about and um, to be honest, it's happening very quickly and I suspect, you know, we'll get something in place for next year, but it will evolve over a number of years as the competition grows um, and, and, you know, I think it, it will be, you know, in the end, a great outcome for everyone. And, and working in uh, this position as a lawyer for the AFL, 
do you have to be totally unbiased or are you allowed to still barrack for a footy team and go to the match and scream as loud as you can or do you have to put a lid on it? Uh, no, I think you can, you can have a bias. You've got to put that to one side at times. So when I prepare the AFL fixture, uh, I have to leave my Geelong bias at the door. Um, and, and when you're watching a game, uh, I, I view it a little bit differently now. Uh, I still love watching it. So watching the, the Giants-Bulldogs game on the weekend was unbelievable. I, you know, I just love watching footy still. Um, but I um, also look at it with a different lens now. I'm looking at it more um, commercially. Um, I'm looking you know, at the broadcast. Are the broadcasters doing um, the right thing or are they throwing too many commercials in there or something like that? So I, I do view footy differently, but I still love it. and. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a problem having a bias as long as you know when to let it go. Sure. And finally, Marcus, if you had one or two bits of advice for our students who, again, are watching this and they're not sure where their career might take them, they're looking at a whole range of options, uh, what would those bits of advice be? Yeah, well, uh, firstly, keep an open mind. Um, Law is a great platform for so many different things. Um, I never thought I'd get to where I am now um, through law. Uh, and uh, also, just with the relationship side of things. So you get to a point, I think, in law where there's so many lawyers who can do the job. You've got the, the skills and the, and the knowledge, but what will elevate you to the next level is, is your relationship um, building, your emotional intelligence, your networking, those sort of softer skills. And you don't necessarily learn all about those in law school. That's just something you've got to develop in life, I think. Um, and that, uh, you know, I think that's really important in terms of your career progress. Well, there you go, students. Um, some great advice uh, from Marcus King. Um, bottom line is, keep an open mind and build relationships. Thanks for watching.